We're going to go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to talk with you about policy. And policy is becoming pervasive across our industry. Um, many products inside and outside of OpenStack are exposed policy today and more are working on it as we speak. Uh, my name is Peter Bland and I work on a project called Congress. Uh, Tim Henricks is also on the schedule, but unfortunately he had a last minute conflict so he wasn't able to make the presentation. He will be here tonight and later through the week though, so we can catch up then. So in this talk I'm going to try to discuss and describe the policy problem, what it is, why it's important. I'll just uh, uh, describe Congress, which is a system or a framework for policy-based management across cloud infrastructures and discuss how Congress complements existing policy infrastructure and enables um, uh, cross-component policies in OpenStack. So what is the policy problem and why are so many people interested in it? Well, the answer is based on a very simple observation. We live in a world full of rules and regulations. So governments pass laws, industries gather together and describe best practices, they, organizations enter in, into contracts with each other and also will have meetings to discuss best practices. Um, some, some of these rules and regulations impact IT systems, some don't. Um, but people who are responsible for cloud services and IT systems need to be aware of the rules and regulations because there's penalties for breaking them. There's government uh, legal penalties, financial penalties, um, sanctions from other governments, for example, and uh, public outcry. These are all things that people who are managing large infrastructures worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. So here are some of the IT-specific use cases in the, in the cloud and some of the things that we hear from uh, our customers of what, um, how policies affect them in IT. At VMware, we, of course, we interface with IT operators and cloud operators on a daily basis. And um, when talking about policy with them, there's really two, we can distill the conversation into two main themes. Uh, one theme is everyone has a different perspective of what policy means, and that's mainly um, affected by what they see in their day-to-day -day operations, what they care about, what they're afraid of, and what is really on their front burner constantly. The other uh, trend we see is that everyone tends to agree that most policies span the traditional silos you see in clouds. So most policies aren't pure, purely compute or purely storage or networking based. They're actually more generic. Um, and span the entire cloud. So one example I like is the um, kind of the series of geofencing problems and policies. So one, in some countries, for example, Singapore, Japan, there are laws in place that say that data that originates from a citizen of that country cannot leave the geographical boundaries of that country. So it's easy to see from this policy, one that is very simple to describe in English, but it also has impacts of where the VM can be placed by the compute management stack, where the disks arrays can be, and what kind of network policies need to be in place. So this is an old problem, and it's actually being addressed today. Uh, I'm told that there's a long and interesting story about how that happens, but at its core level, it boils down to the fact that we throw a lot of manpower, time, and energy to solve it. So lawyers, government organizations, auditors, IT professionals, uh, everyone involved with the entire end-to-end uh, -end process are responsible from distilling these high-level goals all the way down into low-level policies or configuration that happens in the underlying systems. So in some instances, the policy might turn into configuration files. It might turn into actual physical topology of networking gear. It could turn into ACLs on firewalls and etc. But we can see that the actual enforcement point is very far away from the uh, top level desire or stated policy that we're trying to achieve. So OpenStack actually improves on this to some degree. So with the event of, let's say, logical topologies in Neutron or even group policy uh, procedures, we're actually getting closer to what the policy writer wants. Um, so the one challenge remains, however, in that these 
remain policies at individual silos. And that, while those address concerns at that level, there is a higher plane where we want to be able to go to to analyze and describe policies that go across the entire system. Another point that I want to bring up here is that while OpenStack Im improves things because we're software defined, it also hurts a little bit. Um, and that is, if you look at the way policies were traditionally enforced, um, the people in the manpower who is uh, implementing this had time to do it. So for example, if I wanted to get a new system to run my application on, I had to submit a ticket for the system to be ordered, and I'd expect that to take a couple weeks. Well, that, that system also facilitated someone to sign off and say, does he really need four processors? Is that a reasonable amount of RAM for that? Now in the world of self-service and uh, software provisioning, I expect that operation to take a couple seconds. And there's no way for a human to get involved with that. So these are all challenges that we see in deployments that are, um, people are trying to grapple with today. So now I want to get into uh, Congress and introduce what um, kind of where we feel that that fits in the organization or, or in the in clouds. So Congress is a new cloud service whose sole responsibility is policy in the cloud. If you give policy um, a Congress a policy that's important to the cloud, it can monitor the cloud for violations. It can enforce that those violations cannot occur or it can correct them after the fact. And to do its job, it relies entirely on the other services that exist in the cloud today. So one, key, one of the key tenets we wanted to achieve or thought was critical to achieve when we were designing Congress is to ensure that it worked across any cloud service. Conceptually, the way we do this is we provide a plug-in interface across um, any cloud service and a common data model in which it can communicate data up to the service. Each cloud service, um, from Congress's point of view, exposes the, date, the policy relevant data that it knows about in a form of tables. So if you're familiar with databases or SQL, this should be fairly straightforward to you. Um, this may or may not be the way that the data is organized internally in the component, but, and that's the job of the, of the plugin to do that translation. So these plugins can either be tightly or loosely coupled with the component themselves. They can use the component's existing API to query the data that it has, or they could be um, tightly integrated and push the data up to Congress via triggers whenever that policy changes. But the important point here is that there is a common data services framework where all of the data that is available in the cloud is put in a form that can be reasoned about consistently. In addition to being able to interoperate with any cloud service, we also feel it's critical that we support any policy that the cloud operator wants to use. So at lower levels of, um, or kind of domain specific levels of the system, you have policy languages that have nouns in them that make sense within that domain. So for example, the term VM is actually specific to compute um, storage array or um, network, subnets, all of these are specific terms that at a higher level would be very expensive to express in a kind of cross-cloud um, policy system. So instead, what Congress does is it treats input data as a series of tables and uses a uh, policy language based on a form of data log, SQL, first order logic. These are all kind of um, systems that have the same base principles. So Congress achieves, um, er, enforces policy by reserving a few table names and by carefully crafting the data that gets pushed up into those tables, you can both monitor the state of the cloud as well as affect, and, and by populating data into those tables, we can control what those um, components are doing. So using these reserve tables, Congress does really two things. It monitors policy and how it's, the state of the cloud is in compliance or out of compliance with the policy, and it enforces policy. So I'll go through this in more detail. Monitoring is achieved by simply 
evaluating policy over the current state of the cloud that Congress sees and populating through the policy statements, populating the special table that results in, that describes policy violations in the cloud. Uh, enforcement's a bit more involved because there's actually two ways that you may want to enforce data in the cloud. One is, be, is to keep violations from occurring and one is to resolve violations after they occur. So to prevent violations, Congress expects that the services who are making changes to the state of the cloud first ask Congress whether that would result in a policy violation. Clearly this involves an actual change to the component itself, component being an application or a uh, given uh, OpenStack component. Um, one of the reserve tables in this case is permitted actions, and permitted actions would list the, uh, uh, kind of given on the current state of the cloud, list the operations that would be allowed from that point. To correct violations, Congress can identify violations and populate another table, which is actions to execute. These actions to execute correspond to operations that should take place to remedy the po existing policy violations. So these can boil down to bash scripts or API calls at the end of the day. But from Congress's point of view, what it is doing is looking at the data exposed from the cloud services, identifying the violations, and then looking and then using the policy it knows about to know what changes it needs to make to those source tables. So let's go do an example. Well, actually, before we get there, I want to jump, dive down deep into an assembly level view of the grammar of the policy language. So if you've studied policy languages in uh, undergrad or postgrad, I'm told that this is pretty straightforward and obvious. I did not study, uh, get a PhD in policy languages, and Tim isn't here, so, you know, guess you're a we're out of luck on that one. However, the, my goal of showing this grammar is to reinforce that there's nothing uh, domain specific in this, in this policy language. And that has benefits and drawbacks, which means it has a place where it makes a lot of sense to apply this and places where it may not make as much sense. The policy language gets its power from the objects that are exposed to it from the cloud services. So I can declare things only based on object names or resource names that other components expose. So if Nova exposes VMs and VM owners concepts to me, I can now write policies based on those concepts. So jumping back up, let's go to a uh, example. And this is an example of a policy that we've uh, gone through with a customer who has a very large OpenStack deployment and ha actually has coded up this in Python. It's very rigid, and um, we're going to describe how we could achieve that same thing using that same goal using Congress and a policy based framework. So, the policy is this every network attached to a VM must either be a public network, or if it's a private network, that private network must be owned by a user who is in the same group as the VM's owner. So why this example? Well, this is important because this policy actually crosses three different services here. We have Nova, who knows about VMs and their ownership. We have Neutron, who knows about networks and their ownership. And we also have some LDAP server who manages group membership. I explicitly put LDAP here instead of Keystone because that is specific to this customer's environment. And it's an example of that in all installs, we're not going to be pure OpenStack. So we need to have a system that can be compatible across uh, both open source and proprietary solutions. So to enforce this policy, Congress can do three, uh, three things. It can do one, uh, two, or three of them. It can monitor, which means it's just watching to see as VMs are deployed, do they obey this policy? It can, if it's deeply integrated with Nova, it can also let Nova know before Nova is to deploy a VM that that would not be uh, within policy. And it can correct uh, problems after the fact. For example, if an LDAP group membership changes, it can enumerate all the possible ways that policy could be uh, brought back into compliance. I like jumping back to the low level view in the assembly language. Um, where you can see that as we've added cloud services here, um, we've actually increased the namespace of the policy. So in this case, we've uh, included some tables that are exposed from Nova, Neutron, and uh, 
LDAP. I'll get a little bit more into that later. But the point is, is that these data are, um, represent principles that, are, that the policy writer knows about. Congress doesn't actually know what, what a VM is and doesn't really care. All it cares about is that the VM owner says that these two, that these, uh, the joins of these principles shouldn't be, ever be seen in the cloud. This next uh, rule down here is interesting because it's actually an intermediate table in the, in the data model. So what we've done here is we've taken an LDAP uh, data model which just has users and groups and we've created an implicit, uh, you can think of it as a view in SQL terms or a, a join, but what we've done is created a view that has, or a rule that indicates that two users are in the same group. This functionality is very useful when you want to take low level services and create concepts that are more relevant or more directly associated with how the user wants to write policies. So I don't have to go to LDAP and, or my LDAP server and implement a concept of same group. I can actually write a policy rule that uh, implements that for me. So how does this work in, in the cloud? So in this um, example, we have three VMs, VM1, VM2, and VM3. VM1 is connected to a private network. VM2 is connected to a public network. Um, and VM3 isn't connected at all. We also have three table, or uh, well, five tables down here, four of which are representing uh, input tables that are coming up from plugins and various cloud components. And the fifth is a reserve table in Congress. So you can see that we've defined an, a fictitious LDAP server here, which has four users in it. Um, and all of those users are members of the group Congress. We also have um, Neutron providing ownerships of networks. We have Neutron providing lists of networks that are public, as well as Nova um, providing VM ownership. In this case, if you go, if you think back to the policy I presented and you look through this data, um, it's, you can do the quick join in your head and realize that there's no violations in this case. So the result of that is that in Congress, the reserved errors table won't have any rows in it. But you know, Tim wasn't able to make this meeting and maybe someone got mad at him and directly went to the LDAP server and removed him from the Congress group. Said, you're, you're no longer here. Maybe we could have prevented that from happening, maybe not. But the result is, is now that there, now there is a violation in our cloud state as compared to our stated policy. And so in that case, what Congress will do is represent that by adding a row to the error table. And uh, so this is, a, again, a, a low level view of the system. You can imagine putting kind of nice, more user-friendly interfaces on top of this. You could add alerting systems. Maybe we could start sending Twitter feeds of violations, et cetera. So why do we think Congress is a good fit for OpenStack? Well, I think uh, the first reason is, is pretty obvious. Why we got involved is we got really pulled in by our customers. We have customers who are happy with OpenStack. They, they love the power and flexibility it provides. And because of that, they're getting pulled into deploying OpenStack into more and more tightly regulated environments. And as this happens, they're feeling the pain more about trying to manage these cross-component policies in a um, consistent and uh, easy way. There's also a um, interesting aspect of policy in that since it's a interface level with the user, this provides a place where vendors can provide, can achieve lock-in to some degree. Because they, when you define the policy language, if that isn't an open framework, then um, you can actually kind of create lock-in just by the fact that you create experts on, on your policy language and prevent others from implementing that. So we feel strongly that it is very important that we have a community-based project such that no vendor can control the policy language, including VMware. Um, this is actually critical to achieving the goal because policy is really best achieved when everyone is um, or cooperating on it because then we can all leverage the uh, other systems that are part of, this, uh, part of um, the entire op uh, cloud, I guess. So that brings me to the last point. So having Congress support a project means that future projects can leverage the data exported by um, those previous projects. 
So let me give an example. If we look at something like um, Neutron, um, it's clear to see that there is value in integrating external data from the system into Neutron. So for example, if I know that a VM is vulnerable, we may want to add that to a security group or lock it or add ACLs to block access to that port. Now, anyone can, any one of the OpenStack developers can write a single integration with another system and query data from Neutron or another system. But what we can't do is query data from systems that we don't even know about today. So I'm really looking forward to going to Paris and hearing about all the new things that are coming out in OpenStack over being developed over the next six months. And let's imagine that a new component comes out that does something magical. Let's say we can predict attacking IP addresses on the internet before they even send packets to us. And someone deploys us. I don't think that's going to happen. But if it did, it's clear that the Neutron project would be really interested in getting that data so that it can proactively put ACLs in the network. Well, one way to do that is for the Neutron team to learn about this, go back to their code, write an interface to query the API of this new system, and do it. However, if Neutron is Congress aware, and this new system that comes up publishes its data to Congress as well, then the actual integration of those two features could be done by simply adding a policy statement by the user that says that uh, attacking IP addresses should be blocked. So where are we at with Congress? Um, we have a base design and implementation proof of concepts that have been done. We're actively developing the system. This is a very small uh, snippet of the roadmap, which is actually posted on the wiki. This includes some things we've prototyped and implemented, other things that are on our immediate and, short, uh, and slightly longer term roadmaps. But the, the point is, is that this system is actually very early on. We think it's important to work with the OpenStack community to vet both the design and the roadmap of our ideas before we get too far. And so that's why I'm talking to you today. Um, while you know, we can take the system and show some, some demos, the real power of the system comes in when the community actually interacts with it and agrees that this is the right way to go about it. So a lot of things on this roadmap are things that we want to discuss further with the community, and um, that's why we want to keep this, uh, this conversation ongoing. So Congress is currently a project uh, pushed in StackForge. You can see um, that the way we develop is actually very much in common with any uh, full-fledged OpenStack project. We have IRC meetings. We communicate on the OpenStack dev mailing list. We do everything out in the open um, for community involvement. Um, and then the, the big point that I want to point out here is that we have Thanks to the generosity of the OpenStack Foundation, they've created this open source uh, sessions this time around. And we have a room on Friday for the community to discuss this project and how uh, we should take the next steps on it. So here's some uh, kind of quick references to it. We do have our code hosted up on SourceForge. Um, the wiki is kind of the holding ground for our kind of state of where the project is at and stuff we're working on right now, and links to everything else. We also have some other um, corollary information there. And so that was the, the key gist of it. I guess I talked pretty fast this time. Um, these are some other talks that VMware is sponsoring at this session. And I know that the majority of them have already happened. But as you know, a lot of these talks will be up on YouTube. Uh, so that you can watch them um, in the future. So, yeah, key takeaways here is that we have that Congress is applicable to any cloud service and any business logic or any policy. Enforcement, of course, we continuously monitor the cloud status. Um, this is in support of operations and administration of clouds. And then also Congress can work at a immediate level where you uh, simply are pulling data from existing services, but then can over time become more tightly ingrained as services closely interact with the system. So with that, I think we have plenty of time for some questions, if there are any. Yeah. Yeah, you might want to use the microphone. 
Hi. So you mentioned becoming Congress aware. Can you give us a sense of what that in involves? Sure. So as I um, said, let me go back a few slides here. So the way that Congress views cloud services is as a one or more tables of data. And so for Congress to interact with the cloud service, it needs that view of the data. And we have a plug-in interface that basically describes this is how the data needs to be formed. That plugin can either be integrated with a given component, um, which basically means it's part of that source tree, or it could just sit outside of that component and pull data from it. So using that component's APIs. So that's at the base level for Congress to be able to monitor violations. For if you want to take that one step deeper and actually do proactive enforcement, in that case, the component would actually need to know that Congress is there and know to query Congress for policy violations before certain actions are taken that you may want to prevent in the system. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so my question is with the, the data that you're getting. Mm -hmm. um, so are you taking any steps to verify that those components that are giving you data are trusted? Because otherwise I would just lie to you and tell you I'm good if I wanted to circumvent it. Well, I mean, if you wanted to break the state of the cloud, you could just do it anyway and not tell Congress you're, is what you're getting at, right? Well, I guess if one of the policy is uh, you had the one on there with the networking, like, uh, I, I guess I could modify the Neutron service and have the plugin give you bad data, even though mm -hmm. it's not actually doing that. So I'm just wondering if you're right. verifying the things that are giving you data. So as far as that goes, the, the system trusts the data that the plugin provides. So if the plugin isn't trusted because you allow users to access Nova or an external system, then um, yeah, you could actually fool Congress. Congress only knows the state of the cloud to the extent that it is informed by plugins which it implicitly trusts. So the, um, the part about Congress which is to enforce policy isn't there some overlap there with the traditional role-based policies that the different OpenStack projects support? Right, yes, there, there absolutely is. And I think that um, the key point there is that the, the two types of policies are actually, um, they actually help each other out. They each fill different roles. So if you look at a, a language, let's say the, the Neutron Group policy, uh, policy language, because I'm familiar with that one. There's constructs in that language that are domain specific. So we have a concept of uh, networks, endpoints, ports, and so on that are relevant to networking. If you add it, use that type of policy language in Congress, and Congress was meant to span the entire uh, cloud as, of services, you'd see that the number of kind of primitives in the language would be extremely huge and kind of unmanageably large. Uh, so that type of language that's domain specific doesn't really work at a cross component level. Now if you go the other way around and you look at Congress and then try to write some of the neutron based policies um, that you could write, since it is such a high level language, it would be extremely um, challenging. It would require a lot of work to actually describe those component, those concepts down in a terminology that the cloud can understand or that the individual vertical can understand. So there's actually a cooperation of a high-level overarching policy and a domain-specific policy. And these two policies can communicate with each other. So for example, um, we might be able to expose uh, vulnerabilities that are referenced kind of like Congress can communicate with a IDS vendor to understand vulnerabilities of a given host and change group membership based on that. And a group policy object in um, and Neutron can have a policy that says anything in this vulnerable group has these network restrictions in it. And where that line is drawn, I think, is best agreed upon by the operator and kind of depending on their individual environment of where it's the least painful to write that. Thank you. 
So uh, first question is, uh, are there are any of the core projects currently taking steps to integrate with Congress, or is this sort of like the first introduction? Like, is there any patches to Nova integrating with Congress? Right, so we first kind of started talking about this with OpenStack in Hong Kong, and we had an unconference session just to kind of bridge the, the subject with people. And we've been having pairwise conversations with a lot of the community since then. But this is the first uh, point where we're really broadcasting to the entire community, other than on the mailing list, to get it uh, kind of out there. So at this point, we've written a couple of very rudimentary plugins that simply uh, using the existing Nova and Neutron APIs queries data out of them where you can write policies. But the projects themselves have not, um, I would say, probably don't even know that this project exists or understand why it's valuable. And that's why we're here today. Gotcha. So um, kind of the, the, the point of that is we want it, we feel like right now is the right time. We have the right, we have the vision enough well formed that I think we can describe the concept to people. But I think it's not, it's not baked enough that the community can't um, take the time to actually um, make sure that it fits out all of our needs. Cool. And the second thing is, it might be more of a comment, but uh, have you heard of CADF? There was a talk on it yeah. earlier in the week. It seemed like the two, CADF and Congress, might you know be able to play off each other, like you effectively just listen for CADF events and make policy decisions based off of those, might be. Right, so I actually went to that talk and I thought it was very interesting. And they're, they're focused on an audit um, level framework, which is a, a piece of this where we could see that Congress may um, kind of put out audit events that are exposed via CADF. And your point, I think, is that we could perhaps ingest data through the CADF format. Um, that's certainly something that could be done because data, as long as it's translated to a common format as data, I think in most circumstances, we might want to go to a more direct route for efficiency reasons. Right. But at a conceptual level, I think you're, you're right on. Hi, it's a very interesting topic. topic. I just wonder if the, there is the, what's the relation between Congress and Keystone? Since Keystone we manage the identity and the role, so uh, is there a possibility to export that into Congress or, or vice versa? Yeah, so that's a really good question. And of course, Keystone does mention policy as part of their charter. Um, as far as what my understanding of Keystone is and where it's at, and I am no expert in Keystone, so I'd be happy to talk with more specific, um, so with Keystone devs afterwards. But Keystone is more fo focused on the RBAC use case, role-based access control, across or for a given component, whereas Congress is more focused on the cross-component interaction and kind of doing a common data layer and then a policy-based layer on top of that for queries. So uh, Keystone's policy is more focused for a specific component and roles mm -hmm. and using the, kind of taking the identities one step further into roles, whereas this is a more abstract or high-level concept across interfaces. Okay. I, I should add that we, of course, will ingest data from Keystone just like any other service because it does have valuable uh, policy relevant data in it. Okay, so we have, uh, like I mentioned, the design summit on Friday and as well as Tim and I will be around the conference up until then, we'd be happy to have any other conversations you might have and we'd love to have any, uh, your involvement with the pro project. Thank you very much. So folks, the vSAN session is going to start on time at 520 as scheduled.